Welcome to the first shave of 2024 here on the Soap Thing Project. For this particular shave, I think I'm going to do something that is, uh, well, definitely, uh, definitely appropriate to the January time frame during which this video is being released. It's going to be Nightwatch Soap Company Coco Alps. I was hoping to get this uh, in time to do it before Christmas, but... Uh, the sort of bottlenecking of packages getting shipped from here to there made it uh, made it take a bit too long. So, in any case, here it is. I uh, four ounces of soap for twenty bucks, nineteen dollars ninety nine cents. A perfectly acceptable price. Uh, not great, not bad. And as you can imagine, it smells exactly like this. Andy's mints is kind of. The intent is that it's supposed to smell like that. But this is a tallow-based soap. We'll talk about the scent more during the shave, but uh, it's <laughs> it's a loud one, let me tell you. Woo! Jeez! It's, uh, whoo! <laughs> it is craziness. The scent strength on that is probably the strongest I've seen in a while. And we have the matching aftershave <laughs> to go with the... Uh, Nightwatch Soap Company Cocoa Alps. Tallow based soap, alcohol based aftershave, well, good stuff so far. The razor is going to be the Schick Type L injector razor with a, I think, a third use Ted Pella blade in the razor currently. And the brush is going to be from Sawdust Creations. And this is a. Uh, a 26 millimeter Manchurian silver tip. It is quite a high density sort of thing. And uh, I have since decided that I do not wish to use brushes like this anymore. I've been using almost exclusively 22 millimeter brushes, occasionally a 24 millimeter. So this is way outside of my wheelhouse currently, but I wanted to get it on camera just once so there it is get it on camera just once before I send it away to either be given away or sold away it's going somewhere that is not here let's put it that way and it's a high density badge or not so I I have not forgotten that I need to to do a tutorial on how to lather with one of these because there is a trick to it I alluded to it in a video I did previously but a couple people have asked me to actually show you how to do it and that's that's coming I haven't forgot about it but in the meantime let's get all this together and do a shave all right by the grace of God I was able to get something resembling a lather with this asinine monstrosity of a brush. Here it is in the bottom of the Prairie Shavery Unbreakable Shaving Bowl. You might not be able to see this, but it is really airy and foamy. Um, you the, the, the sad fact of the matter is, when you're dealing with like a 26 or a 28 millimeter brush with this kind of a high density knot, you simply will never uh, get your soap to the potential that it is capable of. I don't care what anybody says, no you won't. It, it, it's not going to happen with a, uh, with a brush like this. And so whenever people ask me, it's just like, you know, how can I get a great lather out of this? It's just like, well, you can get something out of it, but honestly, your best bet is to just ditch your high density brushes and, uh, and get something else that's smaller and, and less dense. It's, uh, I, I, I just, I don't understand why people insist on having these these huge brushes with these extremely high density knots. And then when you see them on camera, their lather is so pathetic looking, it's actually painful to watch. And you got the soap thing right out of the gate being controversial, but I don't care. If you don't like what I have to say, go pound sand. Because I meant what I said. 
So, yeah, this is as good as it's gonna get. So let's see. And, it, and it's honestly doing a disservice to the soap because the soap is uh, is capable of better. I know it is. But you're not gonna get that kind of potential out of out of a brush like this. Because I don't care what kind of a lather you got out of it with a knot like this, you will have gotten something better out of it with a synthetic knot or a less dense badger knot. Yeah, see, look at how thin and just pathetic looking this is. Like, there's no thickness to it. It practically dissolves on my face. In order to, to not get it to do that, I would have had to use just an insanely high amount of soap. I th that's about all you can do. If you want a rich lather, uh, the only way to do that is to just use probably five or six times the amount of soap that you would use with any normal brush, with any smaller brush. And you still might not get it to where it's a very good lather. Yeah, th this is nonsensical. You know what? No. This this is asinine. I'm going to re-lather this with a brush that's worth a shit and I'm going to get this off my face and we're going to come back to uh, to the shade because this is not fair to that soap. That That's outrageous. Okay, welcome back. We actually have a uh, a lather that's worth a shit. I mean, look at that. That is more lather that is significantly thicker and richer, and it required less soap and less time. This was about a two and a half minute load in the uh, Prairie Shavery Bowl. With this thing, it was about a 11 minute load. I actually looked at my the clock on my phone, uh, and I was doing it very slowly and very carefully and being very calculated about how much water I added to the soap and when I added it. And it didn't matter. It's still going to be a coin toss chance whether you can actually, you know, make a good lather out of it. But then you get something like, you can't really see it, but this is the, uh, the QED Select 4422, which is also a badger knot. And I used less soap, and look at that. That's just craziness. So, yeah. It's it's one of those things where, you know, if, if a soap is if a soap is bad, I'm gonna tell you that. But I, uh, I'm not gonna sit here and uh, and show you something that's not representative of what the product is capable of. Okay, let's put it on the face. Oh yeah. That is more the way it should be. Two days of growth on the face today. There. Boom. Awesome. Quick, easy, simple, great, amazing. Okay, now, let me activate the iPhone cheat sheet so I can talk about the scent of this thing, now that we're finally getting somewhere. Alright. Schick Type L, with a third use Ted Pella blade. Let's do it. So far, so good. Okay, the scent to this. Well, Andy's Mints, as you saw earlier. So what does the what does the website say about the actual notes? It says chocolate, vanilla, powdered sugar, sweet cream, honey, and peppermint. But anybody who's uh, not been living under a rock knows what uh, what Andy's Mints smells like. 
It's a mint chocolate sort of scent. And in this case, it's actually a great representation of it. It smells exactly like Andy's mints. Uh, scent strength on this thing is a deranged five out of five on the sniffometer. It's crazy stuff. Does this have menthol in it? It doesn't say. It is, however, uh, it's got to have some kind of real or natural ingredient in it that's giving me a, a really serious cooling sensation because that's a, definitely what I'm feeling with this. It's almost like a menthol effect. It's a very good one too. I think this was a good idea from Nightwatch Soap Company, and uh, that's coming from somebody like somebody like me, who I am really quick to get jaded. There's a lot of stuff that does not impress me, and uh, <clears throat> Nightwatch Soap Company is definitely one of those things that does not impress me. But I gotta say, this one's pretty impressive. I. Uh, yeah, it's just a, it's a wonderful execution of it. The label is cool looking. We'll take a look at that again here in a minute. But they make a good uh, tallow soap that is fairly uh, fairly simple in its list of ingredients. I do think it's a little overpriced because we're talking about a. A shaving soap that in practice is more like a Shannon soap, which is cheaper. So I think it's uh, priced above its uh, weight class, but not outrageously so. It's it's slightly overpriced. I'm just going to say, say that right now. But I, I think it's worth it because this scent, it's got that very distinctive kind of almost medicinal kind of mint scent to it and that's competing with this chocolate note it's actually really well balanced uh, if you break it down to its most basic uh, scent properties it smells like kind of a sweet strong but sweet after dinner mint scent mixed with a chocolate note and both of those notes are really really strong and they are really competing with each other for attention And so as a result, you have a scent that is very strong, but very well balanced. It's, uh, like I said, it's quite impressive. All right, try to shave under here without getting a nick. That would be delightful. All right, well, there's one right there. There was a uh, an ingrown hair there, so that was gonna happen no matter what. Oh, there's another one. And I was putting no pressure on that part of my face either. I was just like glancing over it, so I don't know. With, uh, with having bumps and ingrown hairs and stuff like that that happen, uh, whether I am shaving properly or not, it is kind of discouraging, not gonna lie. Because like right here, this is no pressure at all. And uh, I'm not necessarily even taking hairs off at this point because I'm not, I'm not applying enough pressure. But if I go any further, it's gonna draw blood because it's, uh, there's actually a science behind that. So a blade like, like this, like an injector blade or an artist club blade is gonna be thicker and therefore more stiff and more rigid. And uh, anything you take it across, it's just gonna slice it off versus uh, something like a double edge blade, which is so thin and actually not that sharp if you think about it, it will actually glance over. Uh, 
some less prominent bumps on your face, unless you have a big one that's just unavoidable, usually it will tend to just glance over things and you're, you're less likely to get nicks and cuts. Normally I'd be tempted to, uh, to blame it on poor technique, but when I was going through these both places, I was applying like zero pressure and I was shaving at the right angle. So I'm just going to say that uh, my skin is unforgiving today. All right. I think that's about it. Time to quit while I'm ahead. Okay, time for the aftershave. Coco Alps by Nightwatch Soap Company. Let's put some of this on. Mm, in, th in this case, I... Uh, I'm going to say that the aftershave almost ruins the scent. Uh, and there's not much you can really do about that. Shaving soap is actually a very good uh, sort of carrier, I guess. It's a good platform to, to put a scent into, and aftershave is, is different. There's a different uh, dynamic there that has to be considered when you're putting scent oils into it because, uh, for example, peppermint. You know, we have uh, minty notes that are in this scent. Well, you add alcohol to it, and if you're not careful, it's going to smell like peppermint schnapps, which is kind of what it smells like. So, very few artisans are capable of overcoming that, so I won't fault them for that one. But, yeah. So, my final thoughts on Nightwatch Soap Company Coco Alps. Can I recommend this for a purchase? Oh yeah, this one's good to go. This one's a very good kind of, uh, oh, in my opinion, I would be more likely to use this in like November, December, but I think I'm gonna use it a lot uh, this month here in January, maybe even into February, because it's got that minty chocolate kind of, kind of scent to it that is more appropriate, I think, for the holiday season, but once you're past the holiday season, uh, I don't think there's any reason not to use this. Uh, then it's a great winter scent. Let's just leave it at that. Definitely something to use in winter without a doubt. All right. That's it. That's the shave for today. Questions, comments, put them in the comment section of the video. Otherwise, until next time, this is Soap Thing telling you, shave like you mean it. Thanks for watching.